Hi, my name is Ruven. Um, I'm an engineer and developer evangelist at Contentful. Um, so I fulfill both roles right now. Contentful is a content management developer platform, and APIs are really central to what we're doing. In fact, they're so central, it's the first feature we list if you look at our website. We are all APIs. So APIs are pretty important for us. Um, my team is, among other things, responsible for creating the documentation and maintaining the documentation for our API. Um, before I get into what we are doing, maybe I want to learn a little bit about what you're doing. Who here actually provides an API? Just raise your hands and keep them up. Okay, how many of you have documentation? For no, keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Don't be lazy, come on, it's not that late. Okay, how many of you have documentation? If you don't, put them down. All right, everyone? How many test the documentation? All right, who has the hands up? Why are you here? Go away. <laughs> All right, so our documentation looks like this. Um, it's powered by Apiary. Um, Apiary is a software as a service company who does API documentation, nothing else. Um, this actually came before we started testing the documentation. So we didn't make a choice, hey, you want to write documentation and we want to test it. But we had documentation and tried to look into how can we make this more reliable. So our constraint was it has to work within our Apiary framework. So why is it even important that I check my documentation for hours? Well, your documentation is going to be wrong. It's just a matter of life. It's humans are writing it. Humans make mistakes. The documentation is going to be wrong. And your users, they hate it. In fact, they would rather have no documentation or incomplete documentation than wrong documentation. Anybody who's a developer knows this worst thing is trying something out. Doesn't work. Hey, let me look in the documentation. Should work. Still doesn't work. Not cool. So how do we solve this? Well, we already learned a little bit this morning about API specifications. Um, we talked a bit about the open API specification. Um, if you want to test your documentation, you really need to base it off a spec. Um, there's no way of just testing pros you write down. You need to have some well-defined format to actually test against. Um, our weapon of choice is, a oh, sorry, is API blueprints. Um, you can might as well use Swagger, Open API specs, RAM. There are tools for all these specifications. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more into the API blueprints. So a blueprint looks a little bit like this. Um, this is just one of the examples they provide in their documentation. Um, you see at the very top, there's a URL specified. Um, this is actually a URL template, so you can have variables. You specify the applicable HTTP method, um, request body, response body. And that's it. These are actually the examples the user sees in the documentation. And it's very important that these examples actually work correctly. If they don't work, people do copy and paste randomly of your documentation. If they don't work, your user is going to have a very bad time. So let's get testing. Our weapon of choice for testing is Dread. Um, there are other tools like um, Swagger test templates, Hippie Swagger. Um, there are also linting tools for API blueprints. I'm not going to get into these. We're going to focus on Dread which is capable of both testing API blueprints and Swagger, and thus open API specification. If you're using RAM, look someplace else. So the most minimal thing I want to test on my API specification is, let's just test everything that's read-only. Let's have some sample data in my, um, for a test user. As I say, I want to test every GET request. Super simple, this command line is enough. So I'm passing my specification and so saying, just test all the GET methods. And that's my output, pass, pass, pass. So the fail in there, done. I tested my API specification. Um, what happens internally is Dredd parses the blueprint, looks at those little requests and response bodies, either at the Amazon specification of what the attributes are, or just at the JSON. And from that, builds a JSON schema and tests it against all your API responses. So you can be 100% certain every example you have actually corresponds one-to-one -to, -one to what's in the, um, in the actual API. Um, of course, that's not everything that's to dread. If you just test your GET requests, you're doing more than most people are, um, but you're not really getting the whole API. So if you want to get deeper into it and actually test how complex interactions work, you have to start programming. Um, it's a bit like writing integration tests, um, just even less fun. Um, <laughs> Um, well, it doesn't replace your integration test, unfortunately. Um, if you, you should have integration tests for your API, don't think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to test my uh, documentation, and then I'm good on both fronts. 
doesn't work that way. Um, your documentation usually only documents the happy path through your application. It doesn't uh, specify random responses that are malformed or requests that are malformed where you get errors back. People don't document that because it's very boring to read. Um, so you're never going to test your failure cases in this. Um, so do keep them separate, but do both things. Um, yeah, you can see there's hooks. So every test you have has a life cycle in Dread. Um, and that gives you the possibility to hook into that lifecycle and just override certain things or do setup preparations or tear down afterwards. Um, I have a couple of examples prepared um, how to do them. Um, my examples are in JavaScript. You could also use Go, Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby. Um, there's a lot of bridges to Dread, whatever floats your boat. So um, first, how do I set up a hook? Well, I just pass another parameter, the hook file. So what's the most simple thing you would want to do? Well, I sometimes have tests that I cannot really test. Um, like we have in our API um, an overview of um, what the responses we receive when we send a webhook to you. Um, since our test space never ever sends a webhook to somebody, it actually doesn't ever get modified in that way, um, there are no responses we could check. So we're just skipping that test. Um, probably not the best way to do it, but much better than just not running tests at all. So that's the easiest. If you have something that's too hard to test, let's skip it for now. So I just say this one doesn't need to apply. The most relevant properly is mutating data. Um, if you have a RESTful API, you're probably doing CRUD operations, or you are going to do CRUD operations whether you want to or not. Um, what's problem, what you happen is if I create an object through my test, I probably want to delete it afterwards. Other way around, if I want to delete an object, I probably have to set it up first. Um, the DRED or the API blueprints are very inflexible when it comes to like passing IDs between tests. So the best thing we found to do is just create objects with well-defined IDs beforehand and test exactly for those IDs. Um, so I just create my object um, in, my, um, yeah, in my test um, setup and then actually run the deletion operation through Dread. So I'm making many, many more requests than actually I'm testing because I just do everything set up tier down for every single request again and again and again. Um, that brings me right to the next topic, rate limiting. Um, if you care about your API remaining up, you probably rate limit your users. Um, your API tests are going to run into the very same rate limit because it's essentially a batch operation. You're going to do thousands of requests and your server is going to say, hey, go away. So just specify the timeout. You see, I have basically full control over everything actually gets sent over the wire. Um, so I can actually change the data that gets sent. So if I have example content in my documentation that doesn't actually work because, for example, I have authorization tokens that I need, but um, in my documentation I don't want to make them public, um, I can just change the request data before the request actually gets sent. And if I want to test more things um, that I can't express in my API blueprint or my JSON schema, I can just do manual assertion testings. So you have full control over what actually gets tested, what gets sent over the wire, and what you want to do with the result using Dread. Important pain point we actually ran into, if you have non-public API keys, and like us, you keep your documentation open source on GitHub, and you use Travis CI for testing, which happens to have your log public, um, be very careful when Dread account is in errors, it prints out all headers, including the authorization header. Um, the solution is another hook, overwrite the header before it gets sent to the log. Um, you're going to have a bad time otherwise, um, wasn't so much fun as we discovered that. Um, talking about CI, do CI, all of that shit. Um, if you just make it part of your integration test, which might only run nightly, um, your editors are probably going to be annoyed and you still have a window where your documentation is going to be wrong. Um, that is very easy to run on Travis CI if you're using GitHub. Um, if you're using your own hosting, use Jenkins and run these tests on every single commit where you change your documentation. Um, API actually has a great editor that interacts with um, GitHub, so you can edit in the API user interface, but store the blueprints in um, GitHub to actually keep running your Travis integrations. Also, another great feature of um, API is that they actually have a test browser, so all the test results from our CI system get sent to API, and we can review um, what failure cases there were, um, what things we skipped in a much better fashion or much more user-friendly fashion uh, than what's available in the CI logs. So, conclusion. Base your documentation on API spec. Human prose is not testable and doesn't scale to a big API anyway. 
test that spec. Don't skimp on it. Um, your users are going to hate you if your documentation is wrong. Even if you just start by testing the get requests, you're doing your users a gigantic favor. Don't just do this, oh yeah, we're going to be fine. If you find an error, we fix it. People will hate you. Make it part of your CI. Don't think it's something you can run every other week. It's something that has to run on every single change. And please don't remove your integration tests because you think you're covered by using uh, Dread. Well, that's what I have. Please now all go test your APIs. Thank you for your time. <laughs>